farmers in northwest Pakistan have managed to plow the land again for planting. This is one of the worst of last summer's flood areas when 1,600 people lost their lives and 20 million hung on in very difficult conditions. Flooding also stripped away a lot of good earth. The farmers are worried. How much will grow in the soil that's left? The floods destroyed our crops. We also lost our orchards and gardens. That was our income. We lost all of it. Look at the earth. See what the flood did. We depend on this land. It's the land of our grandfathers. We harvest from it. It's the only land we have. Our only source of income. This land is like my mother and my father. The floods covered a third of Pakistan. One and a half times the size of France, Pakistan has 185 million people. The estimate the Asian Development Bank and World Bank put on the flood loss is nearly 7 billion euros. That refers to farms, homes and infrastructure. But the main part of the economy is agriculture. Making things even harder, the government has been fighting Taliban insurgents in the northwest Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province for several years. NATO's military forces have also been active here. The armed conflict also drove villagers out. After bringing emergency help to other parts of Pakistan, the International Red Cross has been giving people who have gone back to the Northwest crop seed, fertilizer, and tools. But non governmental organizations like the Red Cross have said the international community hasn't helped the flood victims enough. Right after the floods, some Taliban groups were seen doing more than the Pakistani government. We have assisted about 1.4 million people. Uh, we'll have done that by the end of the year, that's the plan we had. Uh, and it's now time to concentrate and focus again uh, on the people affected uh, by the, the fighting, particularly in the northwest of the country. International donors such as the United Nations, the United States and the European Union have pledged about 2 billion euros in immediate relief aid, but only about half has materialized. Plus, there's an 11 billion euro package from the International Monetary Fund. Key voices have also said Pakistan itself must raise money for reconstruction. In October, the government estimated that the floods caused close to 40 billion euros in damage. But many ordinary Pakistanis feel they can only count on themselves and aren't waiting for the government to react. Since our crops are our livelihood, with them went our hopes. Even before the floods, one of my sons went to Iran to work on a fishing boat. Now we have to send another son, because we don't have enough money. The Khyber region falls within Pakistan's federally administered tribal areas, Fatah. Unstable from the flooding and insurgencies. A ceasefire is in place but it's fragile.
Hundreds of thousands remain displaced due to fighting out of the Fatah. And uh, what is clear is that uh, everybody wants to go home. These people want to go home. Their homes is not in camps. Uh, and life in camps is not, is not nice. Uh, however, uh, it's important for them to know whether the security is there where they go back, whether their livelihood can be built up again uh, where they go back. And, and therefore, their return needs to be voluntary. Uh, as far as we are concerned, we're willing to accompany them back uh, to, to where they go home uh, as well, because their livelihood needs to be rebuilt. Millions of people in Pakistan are affected by the floods. The Red Cross has some 1,300 staff there. The people suffering feel like castaways in an international sea. 